In this video I'm going to teach you how to use an I2C LCD display. For this tutorial you will need an Arduino, an I2C LCD display with I2C controller which is located on the back as you can see here. You need four jumper wires, male to female. There are two types of LCD screens. You can use the 20 by 4 lines, which is this one, or you can use the 16 by 2 lines. It doesn't matter which one you use, but make sure you have the SPI controller ordered together with your LCD. Connecting the pins is pretty straightforward. The white wire, which is marked VCC, goes to the 5 volt, and the grey one which is, is the ground, GND. So there are two wires left. These are the SDA, which is the serial data, and the SCL, which is the serial clock. For I2C communication, or I2C communication, there are two dedicated pins. This model is the Arduino Uno. So its serial data is located on A4, and the clock on A5. Below this video there's a link to the source code and in the source code I've written down a small list of all the I2C pins for each model. This is the code of the first exercise. As you can see I've written down all the pin connections so you can actually check if, whether or not you have connected the right wires. And as told in my previous shot here you can see all the I2C pins for the Uno, Mega, Leonardo and Dewey. And if we continue to look at the source, you see here we include the wire and the liquid crystal I2C library. So what we're going to do is go to sketch, include library, manage library. And then we're going to search for wire. And here it's installed already at my computer, but for you, you can press the install button and then you're done. Now we're going to search for the liquid crystal library. And that's this one by Adafruit. And with this library, you can control the LCD display. So you can install that one as well. And then we can start with the code. One thing to keep in mind is there are two different versions of the chip on your LCD. So you have to check whether or not you have an NXP chip or the chip by Texas Instruments. Because this um, address you see over here, 0x27, and if you remember this is a hexadecimal value, and you have the 0x3f. So in my case, I'm using a 0x27, which is the NXP chip. And basically the TI chips are a little bit older, so chances are you just have the NXP chip. I tell the Liquid Crystal library I'm using a 20 character by 4 lines display. So if you're using a 16 by 2, you can define it here, or maybe you have another dimension. In this setup, we're going to uh, do all the code, since nothing happens inside the loop, so we don't need a loop at all. We first initialize our LCD and turn on the backlight. Then we clear the display, so the whole memory buffer inside the display is empty and shows nothing. Then we're going to set our cursor to the coordinates 0, 0, which means an x0 and a y0, or character and a row. And as you can see, we define 0, 0, but it's actually position 1, line 1. Since indexes start with a 0, you have to keep that in mind. If you want, for example, character number 20, you have to write down 19. And then we're going to print a text, in our case, hello YouTube. Now if you press verify, you can see if all the libraries are imported correctly and everything looks fine, you can upload it to your Arduino. I've uploaded the code to my Arduino and as you can see the backlight is lit and our text is displayed. 
we defined the set cursor 0, 0, which is the first character here on the top left. So as you can see, the cursor moved to the top left and prints Hello YouTube. You might want to experiment a little with changing these first coordinates, for example 2, 3, and see what happens. Make sure you're familiar with the positions on the screen and how you can define them in these coordinates. Let's continue to the next exercise. This is the cut for the second part. And basically the start is all the same as the previous exercise, but here is something new. What we're going to do is to show a custom symbol on our LCD screen. And these uh, characters, our symbols, are defined in hex decimal values. And to make things easier, there is a guy who made this LCD character creator. So you can open this link and you can create your own characters. If I switch to Chrome, this is the subpixels of a character. So if, for example, I'm going to draw a weird kind of character for me, like this, you see the code changes over here. Well, we use hex values, so I changed it to hex, and now you can just copy paste these characters. And so, in this way, you can create whatever you want for a symbol. And this could be very handy if you display information and such. So, if we go back to my Arduino code, this is a hard symbol. You can just create your own or you can copy this code. The setup looks the same uh, as the previous exercise till we see here creates character. And what we tell the controller is to create a character on memory position 1 with the data from heart. And heart is a byte array which we've defined here with all these values. So now I set the cursor to 0, 1, so to position 1 with line 2. And I print I with a few spaces around it. And here you see LCD write 1. And that means we write the custom defined symbol from memory position 1, which we did on line 75. After that, I print bosontech.com. So now I can show on my display a custom symbol. I've uploaded the second example to my Arduino, and as you can see here in the center, our custom created symbol appears. Try some other uh, symbols and try to create, for example, two different symbols and see if you are able to show these on your screen. In this third exercise, we're going to take everything one step further. In the previous exercise, we've created a steady screen, but now we're going to create multiple screens which are alternating every, sec every second. So what I did is um, I changed the code a little bit because now we want to uh, alternate between screens. So I've moved some code from the setup to the loop. And as you can see here, I first clear the screen, then I execute the screen one function, wait for one second or thousand milliseconds, clear the screen, show screen two, and then wait for another second. So if you look at these two functions, we first set our cursor to the correct position and print our symbol and I bus on tech. For the second screen, we've changed the line. We're going to, um, I'm sorry, we, uh, the cursor position. So now we're moving to position three or five, no five and I print I and then our symbol Arduino. So what's happening is that it clears the screen, first prints I love Buzz on Tech, then clears the screen and then executes screen two, which shows I love Arduino. I've uploaded the third example to my Arduino and as you can see, it alternates between screens. Every second, it switches to execute screen one or screen two, which each shows a different text. You might want to add a third screen to see if you're familiar in how to implement this on your own Arduino. Finally, I have a challenge for you. 
In a previous episode you've learned how to use a distance sensor, the ultrasonic distance sensor. My challenge for you is to create a schema which shows the distance measured by your ultrasonic sensor on your LCD display. Feel free to ask me any hints in the comments and if you're stuck just send me an email. Good luck!